another episode of Mr. Badger Talks to a to Scum, and I'm here with a very close friend of mine, Mr. Rusty Shaft. How are you, Rusty? Hello. Hello, Mr. Badger. Are you doing well? Well, I mean, isolation's getting... Uh, not isolation, the um, lock-in's getting to us all, isn't it? But um, I'm coping. Yeah, you're coping. Mm. With obscene amounts of Coca-Cola, it looks like. No, it's water inside a Coca-Cola can. Of, of course it is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Uh, but but uh, how how are you doing mentally, Rusty? Well, be- I'm coping best I can. I mean, it's starting to get to. I worry about my job more than anything. That's what keeps me worried. Yeah. But mentally, I mean, it's finding things to do. I, I, I managing to do that. I'm finding things to do for myself. But now I'm at that stage where I'm like, I've done all my jobs now. What do I do? That's it. Those Start playing games and recording can't podcasts. Are they? So you know. No. <laughs> no. Um. So, but it, it's lovely to have you on because you are uh, somewhat of an, an expert, aren't you, in uh, 90s pop music? Well, 90s music, not just pop music, just 90s music that was in the top 40, yeah. All ah, right. So, is, is, this is, uh, if you were to go on Pointless, this would be your subject. Yep. And, and yeah. If I was on Pointless, yeah. If, when, when I'm watching Pointless, if it's... UK top 40 hits by artists who release song in the 90s or um, sometimes they do a UK top 40 hit with a certain word in the title. Watch me destroy it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> when those ones come up, I would I will. I don't just get a pointless answer. I'll get like five or six at least. Do you know which? Well, what my subject would be on pointless. Yes. Yeah. So do you know what it would be? Yeah, go on. What, 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 Mr. Badger, what would your subject on pointless be? Mine would be countries that will prosecute for underage sex. <laughs> yep. That makes... Yeah, I, I think I think niche. I hate that one. <laughs> bit niche, that. Yeah, I know. I, I've never seen it crop up yet, but you know, mm. there's always chances. Isn't there? Uh, day, so, yeah. But uh, you, you've come on here today to to, to do a bit of a mixed bag, haven't you? Because you're going to give us five of your favourite songs yep. and five songs that you think may interest Mr. Badger. Yeah, they're just weird. Yeah. <laughs> What, are you trying to say I'm weird? Yeah, I am trying to say you're weird. Not in a bad way. Oh, fuck you! <laughs> Jesus Christ. All those car journeys we've shared. Yeah. You're one of my best friends, Rusty. You're one of mine. <laughs> ah, right. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad we're on the same page. Weird um, can be good. I like weird. weird yeah, is good. I know. Not, not many people do, if I'm honest with you. Yeah. Like uh, in my last podcast, I got flirted with by a Romanian prostitute. That was nice. So I, I think she was after my money, but she didn't realise I, I am completely broke. <laughs> yeah, she's barking up the wrong tree. Uh, but so we're going to start then. So your your first song you want to talk about, with Mr. Badger? I want to hear one of your favourite 1990s singles. Well, I'll go for a favourite first. I'll go for. I'll start at the bottom. I'll go. I'll, I'll save me absolute favourites as like the the last one I talk oh, about. Okay. Yeah. The, my. Uh, I'll go number five. Uh, Marvelous by the Lightning Seeds. <laughs> Are you familiar with this song, Mister Badger? The Lightning Seeds. The Lightning Seeds. I've got seed in my penis. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Badger seed. I do. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't come out anymore though. Mm. It's just stuck there, <laughs> festering. Um, <laughs> I'm just laughing. To the, I don't know respond to this. I'm just laughing. <laughs> well, why, 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 why do you like uh, your, your seed so much? The lightning seed. Um, um, it's just it's just one of them like like really good feel good songs. If you just want to <clears throat> if you just want to get a, like uplift, get an uplift and a kick. It's just a real buzz, like really good, and it's just very 90s when you listen to it it's 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 indie indie rock sort of sound sorry my mic stands falling over here so <laughs> it might stand um it's it reminds it's, you of tony blair well yeah actually, well, it was actually pre that it was 1995 so it was actually before blair came along but yeah it's kind of that cool britannia wave it's it's a, it's a, it's more of a it's it's a, like a pop song essentially it's like really catchy like it's got a really catchy hook in it and everything and one of my favorite lyrics ever which rhymes a little, it's the last line in the whole song, which is, um, you, 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 you used to know, but you, you, you've since forgotten, and a submarine got stuck to the bottom. 
Just ah. fucking genius. I've had many things stuck up my bottom. <laughs> Never yeah. a submarine, though, but I have had a sailor. Yeah. I tell you, what, what, we can all wonder what's been up your bottom. You don't have to wonder. I, I used to keep a diary, but uh, I can't write. So even yeah. I can't read what I put in that. That is bizarre. Mm. But yeah, so uh, the, 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 are you a fan of your, your seed in general? Is there other things of the seed that you like? Um, and as you ask, the Lightning Seeds are a great band. Um, more famous for free lines, of course, with Bedil, uh, David Bedil and Brant Skinner. That's the oh, one that they're... England song. Yes, that's the one they're most famous for, of course. Proud the two versions. British. There were two versions of it. Yeah. The 1996 and the 1998. I know nothing about sport unless it's been for, unless it's something via pop music. And I know that in 1996 it was Euro 96, and then two years later they updated the lyrics for 1998, and it was number one again. Didn't the German football team also use it? They yeah. did. They recorded their own version of it. I don't. I've not actually heard it though. I, I've, I know it exists. I just. I was aware of that, but I was. Um. I've never actually heard it. So. Well, there we go. We can. Uh, we can only uh, think that maybe Badil and Skinner are Nazis. <laughs> so. Ah. Uh, so we, we, we've. Uh, we, we've got one of your favourites. <laughs> Let's have something that you think Mr. Badger may find interesting. Right, um, I'll go from the bottom here. The um, a weird one that I think you've, we, we, it will be interesting is a, is a dance record from 1998, and it's called. Well, it's actually a cover version, but it's called "I Thought It Was You" by the dance outfit Sexo Sonic, <laughs> which I recommend you have a listen to. That, which is a reworking of a Herbie Hancock song. It's it's good if you watch it with the music video because the guy's so creepy in it. <laughs> It's like these, like, um, in the 90s, they had, like, the, that dance producers. They weren't as bands as such. They were, like, just dance outfits that did, like, dance records. And they went under loads of aliases. It was an alias of another one, Full Intention. See, I'm Rain Man. I know this shit. <clears throat> it was a 90s dance act called Full Intention. They did an alias, which was Sex-O-Sonic, and released this Herbie Hancock cover version. And it's like, it's like um, not you know those voice decoder things they um, stands for and over here you know those voice decoder things they um, I, I use them like, all the time on phone calls yes yeah they like just store that they make that really sort of like they they put a tube in their mouth and it makes like mm, sort of sound it's somebody your voice sound really weird yes mm. it's like someone singing along with that repeating the same line I thought that it was you and that's all they keep saying over and over like a dance beat but it's funnier when you watch it with the music video, which is on YouTube, because it's like this guy just singing that with, with a tube in his mouth over and over and like headbutting the camera and <laughs> dancing to it. So it's like really funny and creepy. Sounds like uh, perhaps it was recorded by somebody that uh, may have met me at some point. Yes. In their lives. Yes. Especially when someone says, I thought that it was you. That's normally <laughs> what they uh, shout at me in court. <laughs> There's no other lyrics in the whole song that is literally all that's repeated for the high thought that it was you. Yeah, for that it was you. That's it. Was it written by somebody with Down syndrome? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> well, Herbie Han it's a Herbie Hancock song. It's a reworking of it, but it's so weird. So if you want to get a hit song in the 1990s... It wasn't a hit at 32, but anyway. Ah, well. Yeah. Yeah, 32 is far too old for me. That's like more than <laughs> double the... Uh... Yeah. Uh, so... <laughs> We'll move on to another one of your favourite songs. What's your fourth favourite song of the 90s? It's a song called um, Good Riddance, open brackets, Tummy Your Life by Green Day. <laughs> Which is like a uh, bittersweet ballad. It's essentially just an acoustic guitar and uh, strings on it with the front man, Billy Joe Armstrong, telling this like bitter story about how his girlfriend's dumped him and he hope he hopes she has the time of her life really sort of it's not it's a very short song but it's like a really sort of night not saying nice it's just a real it's like a rock ballad essentially yeah uh, a lot of people have heard it i mean i did a part of uh, one of my youtube channels where I, glenn campbell did a cover of it i was talking about that but uh, I, it's the original is one of my 90s favorites i like glenn campbell he was an alcoholic yeah. Yeah. He, he died, didn't he, recently? He died not long ago, yeah, the late Glen yeah. Campbell. Mm. Yeah, he believed in Jesus too, so he was a good man. Do you believe in Jesus? No. Heathen. <laughs> Disgusting. Now, I, I do know the song you're on about, though, because I am a, a, a big Glen Campbell fan. Mm. 
And I like the uh, the opening line where they're talking about a turnip boy. Turnip? Oh, t- I think uh, it says another, another turnip, turnip boy. boy. A fork stuck a, in the road. Yeah, a frog stuck in the road. That's yeah. it. Yeah. So I I, I like the, the 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 visual image of a man made out of turnips talking to a in frog. A road. <laughs> yeah. I don't see where that fits with the breakup of a relationship. If I'm honest. But, yeah. Uh, I well, Glenn like... Campbell did do a lot of drugs. I like Glenn Campbell. He was an alcoholic. Yeah. Yeah. He he yeah. died, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, so we're gonna um because you've you've not surprised me with that choice. Let's see what your your number four of your um Rogers odd picks is. Right. This is a it might be hard to find because they changed the title of the song. There's a band called Low Fidelity All Stars, and they did a song called Disco Machine Gun. Which oh, was, are was you familiar with that? When I, when I had far too many tablets in the 1970s. Yes. Uh, do you yeah. remember that idea? Uh, uh, well, I don't remember it because I wasn't really conscious, but uh, I definitely remember the impending court case. You know, ah. yeah. Yeah, they, they they called it something else. They had to. It had a breeders who were an American rock band sample in it, and they had to remove it. And then when they they, they put it on their album, they called it something else, which I can't remember. I that's what I can't remember off the top of my head. The single's called Disco Machine Gun, and it's uh, again, it's like a sort of indie. Again, it's odd. Really, like whole point. It's a really odd ditty. It's like um, this again vocal distortion, but not in the same way. But like a sort of aggressive vocal distortion. Sort of imagine Oasis meets the Prodigy is how I can kind of just define it. And it's just like and um, it's like it's like but instead of guitars, it's all like dance beats and but then it's got like a sort of Liam Gallagher kind of vocal that he's distorted on it. And um, again, I can't I, I can't play them because we've got copyright strikes. Yeah. Play them, but um, because YouTube are bastards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but you mentioned the the, the prodigy in there because uh, that one's dead as well, isn't he? Keith Flint died. Yeah, that's a ni- another nice little uh, link we've got going there. Like, yeah. everybody seems to be dying at the moment. Yes, well, I mean, he died. He died of say he died of drug overdose, not COVID nineteen though. Oh, it was a drug overdose. It was a drug overdose he died of, yeah, apparently. Dirty boy. Manic depressive. Oh, because you like the manic depressives, don't you? That's the Mass Street Preachers. Oh, I don't know. It's all the it's same. different thing. <laughs> Anything past 1984 was shit. Anything past 19... Well, 2001, 2002 was shit. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, well, that's, uh, I suppose, the age thing, isn't it? But I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm 63, so... Uh, uh, yeah, right. yeah, you know, I, I couldn't put up with all this boom-boom music, all that sort of business. No. <laughs> No, no. It's all auto tune, just wank now. I, I, I wouldn't mind seeing an auto tune wank if I'm honest. It's, uh, <laughs> no, of course you wouldn't. <laughs> I'm banned off all them sites, you know. I'm not allowed on them. <laughs> so oh, you, say, you dirty bastard! <laughs> yeah, you dirty bastard! Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, well, before we end this section, we'll have uh, we'll try and raise the mood one last time, and we'll get uh, a chat about. Your third favourite 90s track of all time. Well, again, um, this is a song called Common People by Pulp. All by myself and no one to you. Which was what are you massive, trying to say? Which was a massive, massive hit. I mean, surely you know that, right? Surely you've heard that song. Yeah, but why would you look at me and pick Common People? <laughs> um, it, it speaks to me, Common People, because kind of I can relate to the lyrics in it. You know, it's kind of too... Class, the, the, the song is about a man meeting someone from a different class and like the, the cultural clash, clash. And I can relate to the that. Clash, yeah, not the not the clash, the cultural clash in the lyrics. The I'm cult. About. The, yeah, the cultural clash in the lyrics of the song. It's the cult a, and the yeah. clash recorded that song. Uh, yeah, no, they didn't. Uh, the cult um, uh, recorded "Don't Fear the Reaper" and the Clash had recorded a lot of songs. Ah, he's ah, dead, Joe Strummer. We're, we're doing that. It's like watching yeah. Dad's Army, you know, at the end when they all come in. <laughs> he's no. dead. He's dead. Yeah. He's dead. Yeah, I wonder if anybody from the cult is dead. Uh, I, I, do you want me to Google it? Yeah. <laughs> Shall I Google that? Because I'm on my desktop. Hang on. We'll, I can we'll see it. Here we go. Any anyone from the cult dead? Here we go. Leaning across to type it in. The cult band. I'll go to the Wikipedia page. And um, here we go. Is anyone dead? The Cult are a British rock band from ni- formed in 1983. 
Um, and it doesn't say deceased by any of the members. Oh, past members. If I go to members. Uh, yeah. Yes, there's some dead ones. <laughs> Former members, drums, died 2008. Oh, uh, drums, 1983 to 85, died, died 1992. Yeah, there's some of the cult are dead. I bet there's a, a, a bit of a confusion with your PC when you type members into it, isn't there? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. So, uh, was it the cult that did Don't Fear the Reaper? No, the cult uh, did um, Sheetho Sanctuary. Uh, yeah. Blue, Blue Oyster Cult with Don't Fear the Reaper. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. The Cult of She Shall Sanctuary, that's the cult. That's it, because I, I always remember that song, because in my head is She Sells Her Fannies. <laughs> so, it reminds me of my time in Thailand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah You've been just about you went to Thailand then, obviously. <laughs> have, have you ever got to that point, though, where you, you're looking forward to it and then you realise they, they don't have a fanny? <laughs> <laughs> I can't say I've ever been in that situation, no. <laughs> no. Uh. You never get the taste out of your mouth, I'll tell you that. But... <laughs> I could say some horrible comment here, but I won't. <laughs> well, we'll some... save that for the break. We'll yeah. have a little bit of a break now. We'll be back in part two. Are you all right with that? Yeah, yeah. All right, we'll see you in part two. So we're back for part two of Mr. Badger Talks Trotter's Scum and I'm here with my friend Rusty Shaft. Uh, Hello everybody, it's Rusty Shaft here. Did you have a nice break, Rusty? Yeah, I had a nice wank. <laughs> yeah? Was, was that over Mr. Badger or some of that uh some of the websites I was telling you about? No, it was my own porn stash. <laughs> oh, okay, that's fine then. Uh, so, so we'll, we'll go straight. That's as offensive as I get now. I see yeah, how <laughs> Let's uh, let's run straight into the the weirdness then, yeah. And we'll go with your third weirdest song you can think of from the nineteen nineties. Right. Well, I'll go for it's a cover version, which is what makes it weird. Again, it's a song called "I Will Survive" by Gloria Gaynor, but it's covered by an American rock band called Cake. Cake. And Cake. There's an American rock band called Cake. And they do this. Uh, they do many songs. They're a very weird band, anyway. Their stuff's like really weird but good. And um, they do a cover of Gloria again as "I Will Survive," and you have to listen to it. It's just the most messed up but brilliant thing ever. But but they're bakers. No, they're not bakers. They're just a rock band. <laughs> the name Why is they called Cake. The band are literally just called Cake. That's it. They're just that's the name of the band, Cake. Cake. Great name, you ask me. I think it's a good name C-A-K-E- for a band. C A C A. I can't spell. Yeah. Yeah. Like what you eat. Yeah, as in cake you eat. C-A-K-E. That's it. I've, I've never even heard of this, man. <laughs> really? you never heard of cake? <laughs> nah. Well, I've heard of cake. But... Yeah, well, you've all heard of cake. My yeah, mum makes nice heard cake. Of cake. <laughs> nah. yeah, gonna... Well, I like Gloria Gaynor, though, because uh, is she dead? Um, I don't know. Let's look it up. I don't think she is. No. Nah. Uh, hang on. Gloria Gaynor. Is she dead? Here we go. I'm Googling that now. Gloria Gaynor, born September the 7th, 1960. Uh, no, she's still alive, age 76. So she is still surviving? Yes, she's still surviving. Fuck but, it uh, up. Should we play a lottery? Is she going to go COVID-19? Is she another one? Yeah, perhaps I should write a song called I Will Get Sucked Off by Young Girls. Or two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, that, that is something you do, isn't it? You, not not suck off men. <laughs> um, you... Um, you, every, every year you run the uh, the sweepstake, don't you, yep. on who you think is going to die that year? Yep. Who have you got a, this year? I can't remember who I got this year. I mean, yeah. um, off the top of my head, I've always got I've always got one. I, forget, I can't think of it. Vera Lynn, I always put, because she's like 104 or something. I yeah. always have her every year. She's going to go. Um, uh, no, every January I do a five oldies and a wild card and just pick some people at random and who you think are going to die. Who what are would old. a wild card be, for example? A wild card is just someone who completely you wouldn't expect. I mean, I've like Peter Kay or Nicholas Lindhurst or something like just completely out the blue like that. Just next time, if you're trying to think of somebody that, you know, isn't old, but you think might die, ask me about somebody who's pissed me off. And then there's a chance that they'll just... Uh, <laughs> you know. I mean, most, most of the people have Donald Trump as their wild card, but, quote, not, not natural causes. <laughs> Here's a fact for you. Did you know Kenny Rogers owed me 10 quid? Did he? <laughs> That's what happens if you don't pay Mr. Badger. Mm. <laughs> yeah. 
No, he didn't die of COVID nineteen. Sorry, I keep going back to that subject. No, no, I'm trying to think who's died of it. Tim Brook Trailer and Led, um, Eddie Large. Has anyone else actually died of it? I can't think. They're the only two who've actually died of it. I think at the moment. Oh, that, so that Eddie Large has died of COVID. Yes, he went into hospital with a heart. Uh, he was having a heart operation, caught COVID nineteen, and died. As did Tim Brook Taylor. I did not know that. Bloody hell! Yeah. Oh Christ. Yeah, and some guy was an extra in Star Wars as, as well. I can't think of his name on the top of my head. Oh, well, he's not important then. Fucking one of the extras, one of the bit parts in it. As... Yeah. To be fair, they're the mainly bit parts in Star Wars, aren't they? Mm. Yeah. Apart from what was the name of that giant fucker who died anyway? Oh, Chewbacca. I can't remember the guy. Paul uh, Peter something wasn't it? His real name. I can't remember. Sutcliffe. <laughs> See, I'm not a Star Wars nut. I mean, Star Wars nuts like, no, you know, what color, what, what the, the bloody hairdresser on the set yeah. was, don't they? All that shit. I'm not into it that way. I, but... I think it was Peter Mayhew, wasn't it? That's it, Peter Mayhew. You are right. It is Peter yeah. Mayhew. It was a millionaire up, question. Up and weird. Yeah. yeah. If it had been a millionaire question, I would have got it when it came up on the screen. I would have, oh, yeah, Peter Mayhew. But I couldn't think yeah. off the top of my head. No, no, that's it. No. If Peter Mayhew was on the top of your head, you'd know about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well... <laughs> So we'll uh, let, we'll switch tack to again to happier grounds away from dead people, hopefully, yeah. uh, and we'll chat about your second favourite song of all time. Well, they're all from the nineties. This is uh, these one and two are basically my favourite two songs of all time. Uh, number two, "Don't Look Back in Anger" by Oasis. I began so long, I can find you there. Don't look back, you wanker. Yeah, I've heard people do that joke. I've heard a cover band use that joke. Don't Look Back in Anger by Oasis. I've heard a cover band cover it as Don't Look Back, You Wanker. Yeah. What? what what's the uh, what, What's the song about? Because I don't understand Sally. how you look back. <laughs> Somebody called anger. Sally. <laughs> so a girl so called Sally, Sally was looking over her shoulder angrily. Yeah. So Who, no, they, sorry, we're both talking the same time. Hole, though, because that can... Cause someone to look over their shoulder in quite an angry fashion. Yeah. 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 The, it, the, the opening piano riff rips off Imagine by John Lennon, it's, um, which, I, which, which they acknowledge. It's just, a, it's just such a like, real good indie song. It's just, it's just, I love everything about it. It's just brilliant. It's just a masterpiece. It's not like Oasis to rip off the Beatles, is it? No, they hardly ever did that. No, no. Yeah. They claim they were bigger than the Beatles, if I remember correctly. Yeah, they did, yeah. Yeah, let's hope they go the same way as most of the Beatles. So, yeah. that, none of them have died yet. Well, the Beatles have, but none of uh, Oasis, no, Oasis have. No, <laughs> no, sadly. Do you uh, do you think they should reform? Who the Beatles or Oasis? Well, I don't think Beatles stand much of a chance. Yeah, they could. I mean, Ringo Starr and Paul McCartney could do a duo thing, a White Stripes kind of thing. I suppose. It's strange how the, the 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 two biggest pricks at the Beatles are, are still the ones that are alive. They died in order of talent, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> Which is why um, uh, Ringo uh, Ringo Starr has to be the last one alive. <laughs> they have to yeah. die in order of talent. <laughs> now, I really used to like John Lennon because he used to beat women, so that was a, a nice thing that he did. Uh, so let's move on to uh, oh shit I might have to edit that one out um, let's move on to a, a, a weird song we'll go for your second weirdest song you can think of right we'll go for and I'm not making this up this is the title which is what makes it weird it's a song called uh, and I've written it down uh, it's, I'll spell it out for you afterwards the title of the song is Nin Ten Ichi Ryu an Nin itchy Ryu. Itchy Ryu. I've had an itchy by, ring. Uh, yeah, by uh, uh, Fotec. <laughs> Fotec is, a, is a, a drum and bass artist. It's a drum and bass track. Okay. And it, apparently it, stand, it, it means two sword technique in another language. Do you know what? You, you don't strike me as a drum and bass man. I'm not. It's just such a weird song when you listen to it. It's drum and bass, but it's just really weird. It's like Arabic chants mixed in with drum and bass. And it's just, again, you wanted weird. It's just one I happen to remember and have. So, Arabs. It's like this, you know, you know, the um, Arab music stuff. Muslims. Yeah, I, I wasn't going to say that, but yeah. Oh, you know, like, dirty. I, I wasn't going was, to, I was trying to be careful with my word choice of words, but it's like that sort of Arabic chant stuff, but like with drum and bass mixed, it's like that mixed together. Mm, no, I'm, I'm, 
I don't like all them. They come over and take our jobs that we don't want to do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure Mr. Badger has strong feelings about that, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. You know, I've been unemployed for the past 20 odd years because of them. I mean, like, I don't want to go and like pick potatoes or anything like that, but, you know, I should have the option to say no. That's uh, the way that I look at it. Yeah. And uh, if, if, if I'll just point out before we move to say it's spelt, I'm not making this up. N I dash T E N dash I C H I dash R Y U Nin Ten Ichi Ryu. That's how it's spelt. Ryu was a character in Street Fighter. I, I, there's no good spelling things out because I can't read. So I know it, you can't read, but for the listeners, they are. It's a real it's song. Good listeners, it. fucking hell. Yeah. Yeah, but. Um... You've overestimated the podcast, I think, there, Barry. Yeah, listener. Whoever yeah. you are, hello. It'll just be you. It'll just be you listening back to it going, why the fuck did I agree this? <laughs> um, so, yeah, so that was recorded by Fotech. Fotech. Yeah, I can spell that out, but I won't. No, there's no point. No point at all. All this information is available on Discogs.com, the Bible of the Music Freak. <clears throat> did, uh, d- did Fotech release anything bigger? Uh, no, that was the only one he ever had a, a top 40 hit with. I say, uh, this is uh, showing the, the geekiest. I don't know if you know, but Mr. Badge is into his computer games. Yes. And, uh, I do remember Fotech released a song for Wipeout on the PlayStation. It would be the same Fotech, yes. That yes. would be the same one, yeah. It was shit. <laughs> I'm familiar with Wipeout on the PlayStation. I am familiar with it. Yeah. Is that, you, you, you look... You look like a gamer yourself. Are you not a gamer? I I play games, but I'm not. I'm more into music. I do uh, actually have. I play. I play games, but it's like I'll, I'll play like a handful of like free games for each system, like repeatedly. <laughs> kind of thing. You, as a... you you play them like Japanese ones where you have to look up people's skirts and no. stuff. <laughs> All right, for the sake of the podcast, yeah, I do. But I, don't. <laughs> I play Mario Kart. Would you believe I'm a Mar- I play all the iterations they've done of it. Ah, I own a Wii and I own one Wii game, Mario Kart Wii. Nothing else. That's literally the only game I've got. Do, do, do you play it with friends? Um, I play the current one online. If you anyone yes. wants to, if anyone ever wants to play me on Mario Kart, I, yeah. What's that on the, the, the Nintendo Switch? Is it? I've got the Nintendo. I've got a Nintendo Switch. I have the latest Mario Kart. I play that online. If anyone wants to play with play, come and. If anyone wants to come and play with me, who are Mrs. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Please feel welcome. I, I I relish being I relish a thrashing. I'm absolutely <laughs> crap at it. I love it. I love it, but I'm fucking shit at it. You realise after this podcast, all I'm going to edit out is you saying that you want someone to come and play with you and that you like being thrashed. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. yeah. You are you are going to be. Mine. Uh, Don't quote mine me. Roger will be cancelled after yeah. this. Do podcast. not quote mine me. Yeah. <laughs> right then, well, we'll move on from your sexual exploits. And we'll go to... I can't even remember where we were now. It was Fotech. We've got, we got, the, 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 we got the two left. We've got the favourite song and we've got the weird one. Well, I'll tell you what. We're, we'll end on your favourite one. We're going to fuck about with the pattern. So we'll go for the weirdest song, you know, first. Yeah. So it could have been that one. I, I didn't know which way around to put these, but um, it's not weird normally. It's... It's fucked up because it's a remix of a very, very well-known song and they did a remix of it that no one knows exists. And it's Merry Christmas, Everybody by Slade, which is fucking well-known. Yeah. In in 1998, a, a Swedish dance group called Flush and it's Slade versus Flush did a dance remix of it. And it is the most fucked up thing you'll ever hear. Okay, well, is, is it recorded on the toilet or something? No, the... it's just like, it's like, it's just a dance record that had bears no resemblance to the original, and then randomly they put the chorus in it, and then it just goes back to, like, nonsense. Just imagine, like, this, like, I beef a dance record that's got, like, a summer dance anthem. It's just like, he's like, you know, like, how dance records are, and then a minute in, you just suddenly, you just see, like, suddenly you just randomly get the chorus of Merry Christmas, everyone, from Slade, I, and then back I to the randomness again. I can't imagine, uh, for some reason, a dance track being a Christmas track. <laughs> yeah. It's like a, it's not even like Christmassy. It's like a one of those like I beef so you hear in the summer anthems, and then you don't even know what it is, and then unless you already know, in which case I already know what it is, and then just it's just so funny to me. Just it's like 
it's it's Slade versus Flush. Merry Christmas, everyone. Ninety eight remix is the actual title, and it's I still find it hilarious because it's like so random that it exists. Well, for anybody that wants to listen, what I'm go- we're going to put the links to all these songs in there. Yes, I will. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so uh, I'll, I could I'll, play I'll, them for you now because I've got them on my hard drive here. But we get copyright strikes if you do that. So. Yeah, fucking YouTube wankers. Yeah, you can't hear it anyway because I'm using this mic, so you can't hear it from the speakers very well. No, yeah, I've also not seen if you've got anything on your lower half, which worries me a bit. Hang up! <laughs> no, don't stand up! Oh <laughs> Jesus! I have got trousers on. Don't worry. I'll... Yeah, it's just your cock's poking out of them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just got my cock out, in joke. For, <laughs> <laughs> for anybody who doesn't know, uh, watch Roger live and you will understand that reference. That, yeah. Uh, getting his cock out is a big part of his act. Not not, not literally. Well, so, depends how well it, they know you. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll finish on your, your favourite Song from the 1990s. Roger, what's your favourite song? Well, it's actually my favourite song ever anyway, but it is happened to be from the 90s, from 1996, and it is A Design for Life by the Manic Street Preachers. By the Mongol what? The Manic Street Preachers. They're a very famous Welsh band. I'm sure if you, uh, a lot of people have heard of them. I'm not... I'm Wow. Well, me and some preachers got in trouble, so I have to be yeah. careful when I talk about, you know, are they actually preachers? No. Well, technically, they kind of are, but no, no technically, no, they're a rock band. Yeah, they, they've not been in trouble. Or anything. No, no. Uh, are any of them dead? No. Yes, one of them's, well, that's the whole thing. Um, there were four of them. Richard Edwards was, um, well, he disappeared and we he's been assumed dead for a long time, but he's never actually been found. That's a whole other story. Yeah, that sounds like somebody that owes me money. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You never he find the job. He was completely mental. Have you watched Tiger King? No, no, I haven't. Because oh, uh, there's a lady on it called Carol Baskin. Mm. And uh, she asked me on uh, tips for h- how to uh, send her husband on a holiday. And nobody's ever found him either. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's let's move away from that. So uh, yeah, no, but one of your favourite songs of all time. Is there a reason for that? Is it happy memories or something? It's just it's just I attach a certain memory to it, and again, I can again relate to the topic in the song because it's about you know how the class divide and about you know being from a working class background. I'm not working class, middle class, but you know from a lower background and how we perceive the um, things that upper class do. Would you consider me? Upper class? Um, no. <laughs> Why not? Well, uh, that's a difficult one to answer because. <laughs> Why not strike you as a man with class? Sorry. Why not strike you as a man with class? Um, no, you don't. <laughs> well, fuck you, Roger. <laughs> fuck you in your dirty bumhole. <laughs> Um, I mean, when you say upper class people are still been to prison, haven't they? So, yeah, maybe you are. <laughs> exactly. You have no Jeffrey idea how Arsh- many businesses um, I've embezzled. Yeah. I mean, Jeffrey Archer went to prison, didn't he? So. I like Jeffrey Archer. He was a good man. <laughs> Never did anything wrong. And that Major Hewitt, he was a lovely man, too. Yeah. You know, I also uh, I, I gave the royals advice on how to... Uh, Make Princess Diana go on a permanent holiday as well. So I, I have many links with the upper echelons of society. Maybe you are upper class then. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Jerry and I... Kate McCann, good friends of mine, you know. Tit for tat. Yeah. You make so... our daughter disappear, you can do what you want with her, that sort of thing. It was Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's been uh, it's been lovely chatting to you about uh, all of your musical uh, history, Roger. Is there anything you'd like to plug while you're on here? Anything you're doing? Well, I normally I plug my comedy clubs, the Technical and Smooth Comedy Clubs. I run comedy clubs all around the Midlands and one in Staffordshire, usually, um, where I do monthly gigs um, and progress acts. And I'm not a complete dick as a promoter, not naming any names, but <laughs> I will genuinely progress people. If somebody comes and has a good gig, I will rebut them for paid stuff, regardless. No names, you know who I'm talking about. I do. Um, and um, but it's all literally um, every other promoter. Yeah. <laughs> I smashed the bollocks off that gig. Oh, I'll give you another open spot, you know. Um, but um, at the moment, unfortunately, 
we can't run them because everyone's dying of COVID-19. But normally I'd be plugging that. Hopefully, if we get to the other side and the venues haven't gone bankrupt, we'll come back to them. But to- oh, talking hey. of the, the, the plugging, don't you have, and the music, you have your own music YouTube channel. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll plug that as well. Um, I have my own uh, retro music. I call it Retro Music Review UK, which is on YouTube. Uh, just search for Retro Music Review UK. It's just me talking bollocks. Uh, I'll play a song and just talk about it uh, in my own borderline autistic way of <laughs> Uh, there's no need for the word borderline. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's been it's been lovely chatting to you. Yes, and, and you, Mr. Badger. Yeah. And I, I hope to maybe have you on again soon, and we'll talk about some other weird shit. I think we could. I t- can I test it one little thing in at the end here? Of course you can. Yeah. Um. I. You know the, the mama might not, and I, I I tasted yeast extract on the, on Facebook yesterday. Now this is neat yeast extract. That's my, it's the core what the core ingredient of marmite is without anything extra in there. And um, I I dunked my fingers in and tried this on Facebook last night. I I like to dink my fingers in and have a good yeah. taste of it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I just mentioned that. <laughs> What we'll what we'll try and do for the next one is then we'll try and uh, we'll set up a taste challenge. But I think it'll have to be. After the uh, the COVID yes. nineteen outbreak, yeah, because what it's an idea. Do... I mean, I might get to that, but unfortunately, we can't do that right now because we uh, we have to be two meters away. It's difficult to come and do podcasts up close, isn't it? I can't <laughs> feed you through the screen, can I? No, exactly. No, we can't. I We're want it to be romantic, you yeah. know. <laughs> oh. No, it's been lovely nattering to you, and uh, we'll get you back on again, and it should be more fun. Okay, then. Nice to see you, Mister Badger. Say bye bye to the boys <laughs> and girls. Hello, bye-bye, boys and girls. Bye-bye, everybody.